Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I have seven brand new knives to share with y'all. Let's get right into it so we don't waste any time. First up, we have a brand new release coming from Traditional Pocket Knives. This is one of their designs, the Appalachian Ridge Runner. I got to see this one at Blade Show and it's a very impressive big slip joint at that. So I went with the micarta covers and you have the triple fluted single ended bolsters, lanyard hole, nice and grippy texture. The OEM on this one's QSP. Love the fact that you have the dual sided long pulls and I can easily pinch to grab them open because they're left decently sharp, which I love. Nice half stop, flush in the half stop position and everything's nicely done. Nice positive click to it. This is a large slip joint. I don't know if I have any slip joints this big, and I love it. That way you have a lot of handle to hold on to. Got a little swell right here. It's nice and lightweight. Then this one has a nice clip point, nice wedge up top, and I'm guessing this is a hollow grind. I'm not 100% sure on that. These are in CPM S90V steel, and it's pretty amazing. You're getting such a large slip joint with S90V steel, titanium, micarta. There's other fat carbon, I think, covers. There's jig titanium. There's all kinds of different options. I think they're all 199. Then you have some very grippy jimping up there. It might be too grippy for me. I'm not sure yet, but I will be doing a full testing and review on this one soon. As a matter of fact, I just now finished up the testing on the version two of the Ohio River Jack. I love the Ohio River Jack. I love the first one, and this one has some very nice upgrades. So if you're interested in checking this one out, like I said, it should be dropping, I would think, in the next day or two. I'm not sure. I'm still editing a little bit. S90V Steel, Jig Titanium, Contour and then nice positive walk and talk on it. Anything that I show in this video, if it is available, I will link it down in the description. It will be an affiliate link. So if you want to help support me and what I do here on this channel, helps me pay for my testing materials. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If not, no sweat. Looks like Sincut is trying to step it up a little bit. So we have the Sincut Draxer. And I say step it up is because they went with the double layered GTN, which I don't think we've seen too much from them. It's usually a solid color because they're trying to keep them at a budget format. This one has really, really impressed me. So you have a flipper, works great. And then watch this action. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Thumb stud works great. Super comfortable. Now, if you have maybe XL hands and you fall on this spot, it may not be as comfortable for you, but for me, great. You have a great utility blade shape here. 9CR, 18MOV steel on this one. They do a great job with it, and they all come wicked, wicked sharp. I love testing the Sin Cut knives. They come so sharp, it's pitiful, and it's, it's just an easy one to test all the time. Nice row of jimping there that's functional. They always seem to get the sharpening trials right. Look at this. This is how it's done. See where my fingernail is? You have all that sharpening light before it. I'll think about widening at the heel. Nice little top swedge to thin out that tip. So if you're going to do those fine, intricate cuts, you can do those. Our review on the Draxer should be coming very soon. I just wrapped up the testing on this one. I got a lot of knives in the pipeline trying to get caught up. This is the Carbon Knives Smoke Show, designed by Ken Onion. Carbon Knives is Ken Onion's brand. There's a lot going on on this one. I like, there's some things I like a whole lot on it, some things I'm not the biggest fan of. To me, this is a little too busy. It's not terrible, but I think I would have just liked to have this copper foiled carbon fiber inlay and not this stuff right here. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I mean, then they even went further by putting a laser engraved pivot there. I'm guessing that's titanium along with the titanium potty screws, titanium backspacer, and see there's a lot of different contrast there. And then they also did the gold anno, and then they laser etched the pocket clip. It almost looks like superconductor. That's what I thought it was at first. One cool thing, first of all, the action, fantastic. Uh, OEM on these is Katuo. And I've been so impressed with Katuo Reich. You know, they produce some of the some of the nicest stuff. Their machining is just off the charts and it shows. Their knives, every one of the ones I've tested so far, have performed outstanding. M390 steel, and that's usually not a steel I like to see because there's so many companies that just run it really soft. I don't know what they run theirs too, but it performs great, and that's all that matters to me. I love, love this blade shape. It's a classic Ken Onion blade shape. It does have a bead blast, another thing I'm not that fond of but the finishing underneath it 
has, in my opinion, has kept it from rusting. I mean, I sweat on these knives a lot. I live in Louisiana. We have super high humidity. We're still in shorts right now while most people are in starting to be in jackets. It's hot as can be over here. And I haven't had any issues with these. Now, I have had bead blasted finishes that are rough underneath the finishing and they have corroded on me, but no. You can see and you can feel it, how slick it feels. I've noticed that that allows a little bit less friction whenever I'm cutting things, allowing it to slice even better. How's this a sharpening choil? You probably have three or four sharpenings. It's like in the middle right there. Hopefully that's the case. And it looks like I can kind of creep up right here if I want. The way they put a decent little flat spot. Kept the blade completely sterile, giving it a custom look. The only thing you have on the actual blade is the carbon knives. Wish they would have put that inside or something. You got Ken Onion written on the backspacer right there. I like the overall design. The ergos are fantastic because you got contouring and this is a little bit thicker than, you know, your average scales. I haven't done the testing yet, but I have a good feeling this one's going to be very, very comfortable. All right, this next one really surprised me because I passed it uh, several times on Amazon. I was like, nah, nah. But I'm so glad I, I'm able to check it out. And that is the Trivisa Triton. This is a large Trivisa. So this one has the blue micarta. Pretty grippy. It's it's kind of smooth up here, but it's not overly, it's not polished or anything. Deep carry reversible pocket clip, micarta backspacer. You have a well done flipper tab that sits in front of the pivot. It's got good jimps there. This, I don't know, doesn't work that well for me. And anytime I have a flipper, if I try to do like this, I hit this portion, my hands aren't big enough. I'm not a front flipper fan anyway, but these little titanium thumb lugs right here work well. And this thing is coming in, I think it's like, yeah, 3.89 inches long of full flat ground 14C blade. It's ground, feels like nice and thin, and another one that I cannot wait to get on the testing. Does anybody know who that, I had that on a few knives now. If anybody knows who that designer is, let me know that in the comments. And what do y'all think about this one? It looks like these design features are pretty intentional because you have jimps right there. So this for me is gonna be great when I have to do the, the rope cutting. So I have something to hold on to. And if I want to put my thumb in this area right here and in the saber grip, I can push down a little bit harder. In the pictures, I thought it just looked really funky. And sometimes I'm down with that. Sometimes I'm like, eh. And boy, was I wrong about this one. Look at that nice uh, chamfer right there to get to that lock and texture. It's very comfortable. Just got this one out of the box. Flipped it a few times and then I, I had to, to work on a couple other videos. It's already getting drop shut smooth it'll be a free dropper by the time i review this one next we have two budget knives that i bought myself because i love the way they look and i like the premium versions but i just didn't feel like spending the money on that so the first is the tenable knives ray so on this one i went with the micarta nice and grippy you have a flipper and you have thumb studs you have a deep carry reversible pocket clip I just love this blade. So I'm guessing it's like a modified clip point. It's going to be highly versatile because you can see that tip is in line, maybe even a little bit below. So you can easily use the tip to do detail work, piercing. You got a nice fine tip there because of that swedge. 14C, 20 in steel, raw stone wash finish. The action out of the box was like that. Flipping action, great. Perfectly tuned, detent. You can reverse flick it, thumb flick it. The only negative that i found so far, and it might just be because it's got a little oil on it, but I did think that these thumb studs, there's no sharp spots on those. And I don't like them to be too sharp, but they're kind of slick on mine. Like I said, I might wipe it down with some alcohol. That might be the problem. How do they do in the sharpening choil? Looks like the plunge is back here, so you should have some sharpening life there. I talked to them about that on the last knife I reviewed for them. And I think uh, my buddy Jared from these knives, I think he talked to him about that as well. So hopefully we'll see that change. This is a karambit maker design. Now this next one, there's two reasons why I wanted this one because it's the budget version and we'll talk about it in just a second. It is the Tenable Knives Rafe and it's the Rafe L. The main reason I wanted this one is because the premium one has that bottle opener right here. I just didn't like that. I didn't want that on my knife. This is a pretty beefy, weighty knife because it's chunky. It's got thick blade stock and it's got a fairly thick handle. 
It's got one of these flippers that I don't love. I would have loved to see some jimps up here because I have slipped off of it before. But as long as I put my finger up there and pull back, it goes rocketing out. It's nice and smooth too. I'm never a fan of these wide cut jimps right here. They're just not comfortable for me. I think if they would have put some nice fine cut jimping there, it would have been more comfortable and more grippy. You can also use the fullers that are on both sides to reverse flick it. That's another thing they kind of, they didn't leave this that sharp. So it, it you can front flip it. It's just not as easy as some. And I forget the, the designer on this one. Y'all can also let me know that. There's the designer's Maker's Mark 14C, 28 in steel. They were out of the blue micarta whenever I, I bought this one. I would have probably went with that too. Because I, you know, y'all know me. I love the micarta because G10 just tends to be a little bit harder on my hands. They call them this sand color. It, this is, in my opinion, this is a gray. Complete gray and black G10. I think it looks nice. I love the overall design. It's going to be a highly versatile blade. You could better get that edge down on the things. And that edge ever so slightly sits below the handle. So I can get pretty much the entire edge if I needed to. But, you know, easily from here on about three quarters of the way. Good access to the lock bar. Nice smooth action. Verse flick. Works pretty darn good. Deep carry. Reversible pocket clip. So I can't tell for certain, but it almost looks like that plunge grind comes right down at the end i hope that's not the case can i fix it myself yeah they have an internal stop pin so this right here i've, I've reviewed pretty much all the different versions this is from bmkt one of his first field spec edc i think the field spec edc model is the smaller one love it i have this blade i have the bowie blade i have the warney blade this is a sheep's foot absolutely love it best tech was the oem for this they did a nice minimal kydex on it. These are the 3D printed inside the pocket clips that he makes himself. They work great. If y'all recall, I had these on the channel as well. This is his newest field spec model. Field spec's just the production version of his custom. So you have a nice and minimal kydex. Tons of lashing points. You took the belt loop off of it, carry option off of it, because I just ordered another ulti clip. I'm either gonna put an ulti clip or if I have another one of these, I'll probably just slap one of those on it. But y'all know I love the ulti clip. The cool thing about this one is, feels like it's lighter than that, but it's, it's longer. And I'll tell you what, I was so impressed with the prototypes on these. Now this one does have that little clip. So 4.045 ounces. Yeah, look at that. Good bit lighter. Very, very impressive. Not to mention he's a super nice guy from Canada and he's trusted me with reviewing both of these, all different versions. Let's see, nice push off point, nice positive click, no rattle. Pretty sure Best Tech is the OEM on this one as well. Nice lanyard hole. I went with the micarta. He has like three, I think, different colors of micarta. This is the natural, that's the green. I think he has like titanium brass. Uh, you can check his site. So. I went with the sheep's foot. It was a hard decision. It was either the sheep's foot or the drop point. They both look really, really awesome. But the sheep's foot is going to be a little bit more versatile for the type of things I'm, I like to do because of the lower tip. So I could easily use the tip. In-hand cuts would be great. You have the dark blasted stone wash finish with a nice hollow grind on here. So even though it's not a, a super high grind, it's a hollow. So it comes down decently thin. They slice well. I tested that already. Jimps work great if you need them. If not, you can overshoot them. A sharpening choil is kind of right there, but I don't really care on my fixed blades because it's such an easy fix. I don't have to worry about a stop pin or anything. You got bolt on. My car to scales. God, this thing's light. Forgot. I love getting a nice size. I think it's like 7.31 or something like that inches long. And let me just show you the difference. And I'm usually not a fan of something that large to carry for me on my every for my everyday carry fixed blades. But whenever they're as light as this, it's an easy carry. It's it's light and it's thin. So look, if you go scale to scale and then scoot it back, go butt to butt. There you go. This one's thicker, this one's longer and slighter. So let me show you, see if I can show you the side by side on that. So good bit thinner, but still comfortable. My two fingers fit perfect right there. And then that flare fits good. You know, it's gonna, that's all, it's gonna depend on your hand size, whether it's gonna fit you right or not. 
I think the coolest thing about the Field Spec Explorer, I don't think I even said this one too. There's two cool things. This one right here, where is it at? This one's in Bowler M390. This one right here, where is it at? This one is in CPM Magna Cut. Rockwell from 62 to 64 HRC. That is fantastic, especially for a fixed blade. I'm okay if it's a little low on the fixed blade. Gives you a little bit extra toughness. And I'm not worried about this blasted sunwash finish rusting on me because of it being in Magna Cut. I have not had any of my Magna Cut blades rust, and I've ha I have several of them like this. No problem whatsoever. Like I said, one of the coolest things I think about this is the price tag on this. For everything you're getting here, I just looked at them on the website. They're still available. I think pretty much all of them, I think one blade shape is sold out. I think it might be the Tonto or maybe, I don't know. You have to go check it out. But these come in at 200 bucks, $200. You know, I got some that are not this big or they don't have a premium steel that are, you know, in this ballpark. You know, I got some Magna Cut knives and I think the only other one that I have that's in that $200 range is my White River Knives Ursus Cub. And they produce their own knives. So they can, their margins, they can shrink their margins a lot. He's using an OEM, you know. So let me know what y'all think about the new Explorers. I think it's an absolutely beautiful, easy fix blade. It performs well, super lightweight, easy to carry. And I cannot wait for the stuff he's got coming in the very near future because uh, he showed me something recently and it's exciting. Y'all know how much I love my EDC fixed blades. Well, that's gonna do it for today's video. Here's another shot of all of them open. Like I said, all these will be linked down in the description. Coming up very soon, like I said, the Ohio River Jack review should be in the next couple of days. And if you don't mind, let me know which one of these knives you would like to see a review on first. That always is a huge help, and I can't thank y'all enough. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those down below. I hope everyone else is having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.